So welcome to another video on my channel. And in this particular one, we are gonna create a classic Minesweeper game in Flutterflow. And you don't need to be a coder for this particular one. We're gonna use the power of ChatGPT to do all of the hard work for us. And I'm gonna show you kind of how you can work with custom widgets and how you can add all the hooks in that you need for your Flutterflow project. And with literally just some imagination, you could be able to follow the same techniques and you're gonna be, be, be able to build your own kind of game type applications and I'd love to see what you come up with. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. If you'd like to follow along in this particular project, you can use either the local run the desktop version of Flutterflow or you can use the web version as well. So if you are a free user of Flutterflow, then this tutorial is gonna be perfect for you as well. This is the clonable project. The link is in the description. It's just got some basic widgets in there, nothing special going on. And that is what we're gonna use as the foundation of our project. So now let's head over to ChatGPT and let's have a look at the prompt that we use to create our first piece of custom widget code. Okay, so here we are then in ChatGPT and you can see I've created probably the most basic prompt that I could probably create in order to generate me some code here that I'm gonna use in my particular project. Now it's gone away, it's done a really good job. It's a great starting point for my particular application. But the key thing for this particular video is that I'm going to copy that code and provide it as a link in the description. So you've got the same code as I've got in order to successfully follow along in this particular video because chances are ChatGPT might've created a slight different variant of it so um, we want to get the same results together so please do go and grab that code from the link in the description now the key thing to point out at this particular moment in time is I'm going to move over to Flutterflow now and I'm going to create the the first kind of basic part of our custom widget which we're going to push this code into very shortly but the the only bit that you need to make sure you remember at this moment is the name and this is the 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 kind of the naming convention that we've got here the mine sweeper game so I'm just going to create a custom widget called mine sweeper game so let's head over to Flutterflow and let's get that bit sorted out first and then we'll come and grab what we need from this particular code and then push that into the custom widget. Okay, so back in Flutterflow, let's move over to the left-hand side. Let's choose the custom code option here. Now, I've already got some custom action already created in here. We're gonna use this a little bit later, and really all this is really just doing is showing a load of confetti that kind of explodes onto the screen um, should we complete a successful iteration of the game. So we're gonna leave that as it is, not worried about that too much here. Let's move over to the add option here, just choose add here. Go to and select widget, and then in the name here, this is where we need to make sure we get our name right to what has been generated in ChatGPT. So this is called Mine Sweeper Game like that. That's the case that I'm using. So all I need to do is hit the save widget, and I'm gonna say yes, like that save, and I'm just gonna choose this option up here to add the boilerplate code. So what's gonna happen now is that some Flutterflow is gonna generate some kind of code that it, it needs to use in the kind of the code editor here to conform to the structure that it needs in order for us to successfully carry on coding this particular custom widget. So let's add the boilerplate code here, just add that. And you can see here that it's kind of flashed out everything that we need. Now remember, this tutorial is very much not particularly geared at coders, because what we want to try to do is we want to try to rely on ChatGPT to kind of do all of the hard work for us. Now, there's gonna be times in this particular tutorial where we might need to just get our hands dirty a little bit in this code here, but um, I'm gonna try and keep that to the minimum, so hopefully we can just rely purely on ChatGPT to do all of the work for us. So you can see here, this has created all of the basic structure that we now need. And then what we are going to do throughout the rest of this particular series is as ChatGPT generates the code, we're simply going to come in here and mainly we are going to kind of replace all of the code that is in this particular kind of block here. So everything from 25 onwards we are going to create. Now we're going to add some imports in here in just a moment because we're going to need a, uh, one or two extra ones as we go along. But pretty well much, that is the area that we're going to keep replacing time and time again and then in this particular section here when we want to create some callback uh, functions where we want to kind of 
provide some hooks into the main kind of application that we would have that we are going to create we're going to add those in here as well so for example when the game starts or the game ends we're going to want to kind of have some callbacks that's going to call back to our main kind of flutter flow application and then we're going to want to kind of do something like update some scores or something like that so we're going to create those kind of by hand because chat gpt will likely not quite generate the right code for us but i'll show you how that works when we get closer to it okay so that is the basic structure that we have in place now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move now into the next bit where we're going to now bring all of that code over from chat gpt and start creating the very very basic part of our game let's go and do that now Okay, so back over at ChatGPT, let's grab this particular class. So I'm just going to copy all of this down. So you just do the same thing that you, you're going to do with you, probably the, the downloaded version um, of this code. So just keep going down to the bottom here like that. And I'm going to take it as far as this particular section here. We don't need the void main at the bottom there. We're not interested in that particular bit. So let's just copy this. Now I'm going to go back over to then Flutterflows, go the right way, and let's replace everything that's in this block just here, as I said previously. That's all in place. Now there's one more little bit that we need, so let's just head back over to ChatGP. Let's go to the top here. There's an import. Now there's a bit of code that's used with inside here that is pulled from a different kind of package, and that's this import dark math here. So we just need that. So if I just copy that, let's just move back over here and let's go back up to the top. Now we need to place this under this do not remove. We can't put it up here. We need to put it just here so let's just paste that in there now that is all that we need to do so what we can do now is just hit save now the key thing is here is I'm not seeing any errors on the screen that means that we've kind of got a good setup I think in terms of the code that is in the main code editor here and the settings that are here on the right hand side now if there was a mismatch between the two then it's likely we would have seen an error at this particular point so that's really important that you don't see any particular errors and if, of course if you do then please just try the paste again just to make sure that there's nothing going on um, in your kind of your, your the way that you've applied the actual code itself now what we need to do is we need to compile it so just hit the little compile option up here that's going to kind of go and do its thing now this will take a little while to to happen and this is just something you are going to have to get used to through this particular kind of uh, sort of exercise that we're doing here um, every time we update our code here we can have to compile it that will take a little bit of time to do um, but uh, hopefully it shouldn't be too uh, sort of onerous for you in, in terms of doing that so that's it we're going to leave that to do its thing and then once that is done we should be in a really really good position actually. Actually, this game should actually work right off the bat so um, we're going to come back to this very shortly once this is compiled and let's, let's then add the custom widget to our main Flutterflow application just get that set up right and then we can spin it up in the web browser or in local run um, and we should be able to have the the basics of our game working almost straight away Okay, so everything is compiled. We've got the green tick up here. That is a good sign for us now to continue So now let's get this custom widget implemented within our inside our Flutterflow UI and then we can spin it up and we can see our game hopefully working in its very basic form. So let's move over here to the widget tree on the left hand side here and what we're going to do is we're going to add our game into the page content column, uh, container column, just hit the plus, hit the little diamond and then we've got the Minesweeper game just there. So just have that position like that. Now down in the bottom here, let's just give this maybe some, uh, some dimensions here, 300 by, uh, let's just say, 300 and uh, say 320 like that so there we go I just made that up I could have done 300 by 300 but um, let's just do that and that should be good enough now I'm just going to simply now fire this up now now of course I'm using the local desktop run version which I'm going to fire up in the uh, iOS simulator but of course if you are running the web browser then please do also fire up there everything will work for you just the same so let me just go up here let me just go up to my simulator I've got it up and running here in local run hit the little kind of uh, the restart here let's get that all set up and let's head over to the simulator so let's hopefully see our widget in action. Okay, so here we are in the simulator. Um, I've got a, obviously an overflow here that's happening, but I've got the basics of the Minesweeper game uh, running. And you can see here, this is all looking pretty good. Now I'm assuming I can now click on some of these here and I can now play the game. And you can see I've got my, my minds that's getting kind of displayed. And I've got no mechanism of restarting the game or anything like that, but certainly the game looks like it's functionally kind of working right off the bat here. So um, that's a good start for us. And um, we want to sort of clean this up now. We want to kind of remove this kind of this 
app bar that's uh, this that's appeared but of course we're going to use chat gp to do all of that for us instead of us doing it by hand so that's a good start let's now head back over then to uh, uh to flutterflow let's I'll show you a little technique that I like to do with inside ChatGPT where I'm going to take all of the code that is generated and I'm going to continually keep asking ChatGPT to modify that particular code so it doesn't lose its way um, as we are making adjustments. And there is one little tip there as well, which I'll share with you in just a moment. So that's good. Let's head back over to Flutterflow now. Let's grab the code and let's then move over to ChatGPT. Okay, so back in our custom code, all I'm going to simply do now is just kind of copy everything that we got here, quite simple to the clipboard. And now I'm going to head back over to ChatGPT now, and I'm going to start a brand new kind of chat uh, prompting uh, sort of window now. So um, the key thing here is if you're, you've got, you kind of got all of that code already, um, and this is what you're now going to paste into this to kind of get that context all started. So um, what we want to do is we want to kind of remove that kind of app bar. Now, if you just look here in the code, you can just see down here we've kind of got this scaffold here and we've got the kind of the app bar well we don't want an app bar we don't really want the scaffold actually what we want to do is we just want to kind of have the build grip uh build grid sorry just to be in a container that's really all we kind of need and um, we're going to kind of uh do any of the styling outside of the actual custom code itself in terms of any wrap with inside our flutterflow application so let's ask chat gpt to kind of remove that for us so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say here um remove um, um, sort of scaffold and app bar and re um, replace with a container for our grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to paste all of that code in there. So it's going to kind of work that out. If I just hit enter here, let it just do its thing. Let's just scroll down here. Um, there is produced us um, just really kind of what we want here is the code. So all we need to do simply now is kind of uh, copy this and replace this with inside that particular area um, of our application. So we're just going to copy that. Let's move back over here and I'm just going to simply replace this with that piece of code there like that. I'm just going to paste that over. We need to make sure that we just need to keep, keep that one in there. Hit save. And then everything is kind of successful there. Um, if I just move back down here, you can see that the code is really kind of being formatted and the app bar has now gone. So again, like I said before, we're kind of just sort of like sort of replacing and, and pasting over, of course, some of the code that has been kind of already produced for us. Now, if I simply just wait for this now, this all being saved. If I just now compile this, we should see all of that now occur back in the simulator. So once that's compiled, I'll do a reload and let's head back over to the simulator and let's have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so there we go then. It's all up and running. You can see here that the app bar is now removed. We've got kind of this white kind of container that is around there, but as a, a kind of a raw um, and a pretty sort of uh, neutral kind of game here, um, I think we are looking good. Again, we're in exactly the same boat. Obviously, we can play the game and um, find that we kind of get everything displayed, but we've got a good foundation now. So let's now move on with further customizations and let's work through that now. Okay, so once again, let's just uh, copy the code. Let's move over to ChatGPT. Let's just carry on with our prompting here. So I need a mechanism to kind of uh, restart the game, um, okay, because at the moment we can't do that. So um, let's now put a prompt in here. Please add a button titled Restart Game, which is centrally positioned at the bottom of the grid to allow the user to restart the game. So pretty descriptive. Um, I think that should give it everything that it needs. Now, I'm just going to paste in the code here as well. Um, and I'm, like I said before, I'm kind of doing this just to make sure that it just continually keeps that context and keeps our the most latest code that we are modifying and that it doesn't go away and kind of do something we're not expecting. So, and the good thing about that, and this is the little tip is the fact is that if the code that it generates is kind of incorrect um, or it does something with it that we don't like, then the great thing about it is that we can go back to chat GPT, copy the code that we pasted in previously, recopy that back into the code editor of Flutterflow and we can kind of get back to where we need to get back to. So it's just a quick way of doing that. Um, so let's now just hit the little uh, the little submit here. That's going to kind of do its thing. It's going to go away. Hopefully it's now going to restart the game here. So it's coming up here, here, it's talking about the updated code. Now, the other little tip that I like to have here is, is thinking, okay, well, this is great. I can kind of like keep copying and pasting these little sort of 
sort of nuggets of kind of change but actually I want it to kind of show me the, the kind of the full code here so so I'm just going to say here please provide the full uh, code like that so this will go away I tell Jack GPT to say okay well, I'm going to give you the kind of the full generated code that we had previously then that allows me just to quite simply kind of come into this particular class here and then copy all this all the way sort of select all of this right the way down to the bottom and then I can just copy and paste that back over everything that I have with inside the code editor of Flutter flow so this is looking like it's doing its thing um, it's going to add that logic in for that restart in fact it's probably going to going to create the button here there's there's the restart game button that is added this is all looking really good so I can just copy this of course all the way back up to the top to that particular class here that we said before this one here if I just copy that let's move back over to flutter flow and again I can just copy and paste it over the top here so if I just go here set that class here go right the way down to the bottom Let's just paste that over like that. That's looking good. If I hit the save, good. We haven't got any kind of errors that it's kind of identified at that particular stage. Just gonna hit the compile. Now, fingers crossed that we're not gonna see any kind of red box with an X in here. We're gonna see that tick. Then of course we can then restart the game. Let's have a look and see what it's produced. So let's go and wait for that to happen and I'll demonstrate that again in the simulator. Okay, so here we are then back up and running. You can see here we've still got this overflow issue. It's kind of overflowing our button here. Let's quickly go and kind of crack that now with inside uh, flood, flood of flow here. Let's move back over to then the widget tree. Let's just give this just a greater height here, just for good measure for the moment. Let's just put this as 400. Let's just quickly just restart this. There we go. So brilliant. So we've got a much better view here now. Lev. Now at the moment I can start the game off. I can start kind of like finding the, the mines there. Obviously that's not the principle of the game, but I just wanted to get that up there. Now let's restart the game now. And of course we can now carry on and continue, which is looking pretty good here. There we go. So that's great. Let's now carry on with our customizations. Excuse the interruption in your learning, but I just wanted to reach out to you to let you know about the Digital Pros No Code Academy. This particular private community is fantastic. It's got all of my training content there. Lots of written articles, question and answers, a code library, lots of topics around the no code space and a fantastic community. Please do check the link in the description. It'd be great to have you part of the community. Okay, so within this particular project, there is an asset that's loaded into the assets location, the images location um, of our project, and it's a bomb.png. So I want to use that to represent the mine and not the X if it's running with inside our sort of our simulator. Now, of course, if it's running on the web, it's not going to get access to that particular bomb.png. So there's obviously modifications that we can do at a later, start, uh, later time to then use a proper graphic um, for web. But for now, I've created a prompt here that's gonna kind of just ask uh, ChatGPT to regenerate the code, use the bomb.asset if it's running um, outside of the web browser, um, and hopefully it's gonna make that change in the right place. I'm just gonna paste all my code in there again. Just hit the enter here, let it kind of do its thing. So uh, away it goes. Uh, I've, I'm going to make an assumption here that it's going to kind of do everything that we want, uh, that we need. I'm just going to have a quick look here. So we're saying um, if the platform is Android or iOS, then use the images, uh, the bomb.png. Otherwise, use the icon close that's currently being uh, kind of in place um, for the web version. So that's looking pretty good right off the bat here. So let's just copy this here right up to then the the class here, let's just copy that. Let's move back over to, if I go the right direction here, move back over to custom code. Let's just do the usual replacement all the way down to the bottom. Let's just paste that in here, save. I'll let it do its thing in just a moment and let's have a, then a quick look in the simulator to see if then we now got this bomb uh, PNG being displayed. Uh, incidentally, while that's compiling, actually, there's um, a little tip that um, I need to mention to you about. So as I said before, inside the media assets, I've kind of got this little graphic uh, called a bomb.png. Now, to make that kind of image um, available to my um, actual custom code, then what I need to do is I need to kind of go into the little settings option here, and I need to make sure that I toggle this on, download download unused project assets. And that means that we, the, the image will be found inside the actual custom code. Now, without that, 
that, you're going to kind of get this kind of black kind of like bounding box, which represents a graphic, but it isn't actually there. So we need to make sure that that graphic is accessible um, to our actual uh, project um, and being used with inside the custom widget. So just make sure you've got that toggled on and that's in the app details section. So uh, let's have a look here. Well, I've got a little bit of a, an error here. So let's have a look at the custom widget. So this is our first error that we've found. Let's have a little look here. So it's looking like it's now requiring some additional imports. So it's clearly the code that we generated in ChatGPT is provided a kind of additional import that I need to have access to. So let's have a little look here. Let's see what it's asking us to include in here at the top of the code here. So let's have a look here. So we're looking like we're missing this particular import. So that is a new addition. So we just need to be mindful of that with inside our applications. If I just need to go up here, let's just paste that in here as well. If I just now hit save, let's let the compilation do its thing again. Um, I just need to click on that here. There we go, off it goes. And we'll head over to the simulator, hopefully with no errors. And let's have a look and see if that graphic gets displayed. Okay, back in the simulator, let's press on some of these squares here. Let's just reveal the bomb. So I'm just clicking in random places and there we go. We have the bomb graphic that gets displayed. That looks a lot nicer. So of course, now that's not gonna get displayed um, in the web browser. You're still gonna kind of get the icon that's gonna represent that, but um, this asset is now being used with inside the, uh, the kind of the local run, the, the kind of the, the mobile application version of this particular application. So that's good. I'm um, keeping the X at the moment with inside the um the the kind of the web version if you're playing along um, on the web let's carry on with our customization okay so let's have a little bit of fun with this now so what i've got is i've got a picture which again is a link available in the description to download now that represents the classic version of minesweeper and what i want to do is i want to change the colors of the numbers um, with inside the actual grid to represent the classic game so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to attach that picture here so i'm going to upload from my computer here i've got it on my desktop so here it is minesweeper classic now there it is just there and i'm just going to paste my code in as well i've got a prompt here that says i would like the colors of the numbers in the grid to represent the classic Minesweeper game. Here is a graphic as a reference. So let's see what ChatGPT can make of this. So I'll just paste my latest code in there, let it go and do its thing. Hopefully it should interpret that image and uh, give us an updated code here. Let's have a look and see what it's up to. So uh, we're gonna leave that to do its thing. I think it was should Give us some kind of uh, breakdown of colors I'm kind of hoping for. Uh, let's see what it does here. Ah, there we go, get number colors. Here we go, it's, it's setting the, the colors there. If I just stop that there um, for, so we've got like blue for one or two or three, different sort of colors here being set for different numbers. So that looks like it's doing its thing. That's the magic of like ChatGPT is the fact is that you can kind of, it's streaming it, um, but it's quite exciting to see actually what it's, uh, what it's actually generated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move up here now. Let's just uh, copy all of this once more again up to that class here. It's not added any imports or anything like that on this occasion. So that is good. Let's just go back here and let's just replace all of the code once more. There it is, and let's just paste that in there. Let's just save it. Do the usual compile. Let's have a check to see what it's doing with inside the simulator once it's done. Okay, so here we are. Let's uh, just click on these here. You can see that oh, look, the colors are now being represented. You see with three now, which is, uh, we know they've got three bombs around this particular one. You can see here that we've got all the right colors in place. Um, so again, it's looking pretty good. So let's carry on with that little bit of customization because what I would like to see now is I'd like to try to make this look a little bit more like the classic Minesweeper. There's, there's these gaps in between these kind of, these kind of squares which I want to kind of bring in and make it a little bit more subtle. It's a little bit harsh right now. So let's see if we can engineer a prompt. Again, I'm the world's best prompt engineer, but um, let's just engineer a prompt here to hopefully tell ChatGPT to generate uh, something that looks a little bit more closer to what we want. So uh, let's go and do that now. Here's my latest prompt then. I'm, I'm kind of asking you to do a couple of different things here. So using the image uploaded previously, I'd like you the grid to look a little more closer to the original Minesweeper. Can you remove the gaps between each item in the grid and style the grid to have a subtle gray border and with the background of each tile being only slightly darker than the borders itself. So uh, can, and can you also, while you're there, basically remove the white background from the container? We know that's a real simple uh, code change. So uh, from the actual container. So let's just paste the latest code in here let's just send that 
Um, now, hopefully it will go and do its thing. So let's let that do its bit. I'm going to copy the code. So to save all of those steps, replace it with inside the editor. And then we'll have a look and see what that looks like with inside the simulator. OK, so here we are then in the run mode. And perhaps it's not quite as subtle as I wanted to in terms of the style. But I mean, you get the gist. I mean, we can kind of go back to chat GPT now. We can kind of customize that a bit more to say, actually, could you make those grays just a little bit more lighter? But um, but that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with um, with what that's looking like now. We've moved, we've we've lost all of that kind of horrible kind of spacing and all that kind of stuff so that's great and of course the good thing is as well is that we've got rid of that border now so the game looks like it's sat quite nicely uh, with inside our main flood of flow uh, sort of page itself so um that's good um so let's now move on what i want to do now is i want to try and see if i can level up the difficulty because this is obviously kind of like a medium perhaps medium level difficulty but let's kind of add those enhancements in so perhaps the grid can be a little bit smaller with less minds for a more easier game or for a, a more difficult game that we can increase the size of the grid with perhaps some more minds in so let's engineer a little prompt here to make those code changes Okay, so here's a prompt then. Um, I would like the game to handle difficulty by, by passing in one for easy, two for medium, and three for hard. If one is passed in, then set the grid size to six and the numbers of the mines to eight. And if it's two, and then obviously we want to set the grid size as eight and the number of mines to ten, of course, three, we're going to make it just a little bit more larger and a little bit more difficult with more mines. So that's pretty well much the prompt. Now, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what gets generated at this particular point because if you, the magic here is what I'm saying is if one is passed in so i'm kind of hoping that chat gpt will go away and it will modify the custom widget code to kind of allow us to pass in a parameter into this particular uh, kind of uh, custom widget so let's uh, hit the end so let's see what gets generated i'm just going to let that do its thing and let's uh, then review it once it's been generated Okay, so the code is all being generated. You can see quite rightly what it's done is it's actually modified the code here for us to be able to pass in this difficulty level. Um, and we can pass in one for easy, two for medium, or three for hard. Now, so that's not going to be quite so straightforward because we're now going to copy this code and we are going to have to make some changes to our widget settings to make sure the code is aligning with the widget settings itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just grab hold of this particular, this point here, this bit first. We're going to do that and then we're going to manually kind of just add this in here into the right place and make sure our widget settings are set up correctly. So I'm just going to do that now. Let's just copy this in. I'm going to go right down to the bottom here and let's paste that in here. So I'm just going to take that here, just copy that. Let's move back over to then Flutter Flow. Let's just go back up here and let's just, as we do previously, just paste that over. So that's in. Now, of course, the code is probably going to fail at this particular point if we try to compile it because we haven't got everything that we need. So let's just move back over. Let's go the right way. Move back up here and let's just identify what has changed here. So you see here that we're now setting up this parameter. So let's just copy that little bit into the right place here. Go back to the top. So I'm just going to put that in just here. Don't hit the save just yet. We also need to do a little bit just here as well. So let's grab this here, this extra line that's been added in here like that. Let's go back. Let's just paste that into the right place here. So our code is now correct, but of course it's the widget settings that's now gonna have to align with the code change that we got here. So let's add a parameter in. So it's called just difficulty. So add the parameter in. So difficulty like that. Now we know that is gonna be therefore an integer. It's gonna be a required parameter here. We've got no kind of question marks indicating that it's gonna be uh, not required. That is fine. If I just hit the save, now, what's happened is, is um, I've not seen any error. Now, if I had not put that parameter in here, there would have been an error that would have popped up to say, actually, things are not quite right. They don't kind of match up. So um, by adding that in there, I've kind of made my widgets, my widget kind of aware of that. And of course, I put in the code here to handle it. And of course, the Minesweeper code in here is going to handle the difficulty as well. And you can kind of see that being added in here on this, this particular method that is put in of set difficulty. So um, I'm making a big assumption here at this particular point that we are going to see a, a change now when we pass in one, two or three into this particular widget. So that's all looking pretty good. Let's compile that. We are going to see an error at the top here. We've got kind of this, this big kind of bold kind of red error here because what we now need to do is we now need to set up the, uh, the value that we're going to pass into the custom widget. So while that is compiling, let's move over to the widget tree to do that. So here it is here. So the mind, just make sure the Minesweeper game is selected. If you just move down here, you can now see we've got this difficulty set. 
Now we're going to want to see this kind of change. So let's just set a one in here. Now that error will disappear at the top here. Now we are still compiling at this particular moment. Um, we're going to leave that to do its thing. Once that's compiled, then let's run this back up into the simulator. And what I should expect to see is a slightly smaller grid and a less number of mines to match, match the difficulty that I have set. So let's wait for that to happen and let's go and see what that looks like. Okay, so back in the simulator, you can see here now we've got a smaller grid. That's looking good. So it looks like the code changes has worked worked perfectly fine. I'll hit a mine. There it is. And uh, so there we go. We've got less mines in this particular example. So we can now, if we wanted to inside our UI, we can now make change of inside Flutterflow, kind of the main kind of page itself now to handle passing in or setting that difficulty. So we can provide some kind of mechanism within inside the UI for the user to select what difficulty they would like to use. And then of course that then be applied with inside the custom, which as we set that one, two or three, let's have a quick look and just see by going back into the widget tree here let's set this uh, up to perhaps three now we might get an, an error here because or at least an overflow error because we're not handling any of the sizes let's just do a quick restart here let's move back over to the simulator just wait for that to reload and we should see a rather large grid get displayed when that sort of reloads just uh, there it is okay we've got no overflow error so that's good so we've got the right size you can see here now we're now playing a much more stronger game now um, if I just keep clicking away here and then we'll hit a mine there it is and you can see here we've got more mines included and of course you could adjust the code if you wanted to to kind of have it make it even more harder by putting more mines in place but um, all in all that is looking really quite smart now as a, as a game with inside Flutterflow but we're not done yet we need to do a little bit more customization because what I'd like to do is I'd like to track kind of a score and the number of moves that the user is actually making. So of course we can then use those values outside of uh, the actual custom widget itself to kind of track that with inside the UI and we can make it a little bit more uh, sort of more useful to the user who is actually playing it and we can maybe track that into like a leaderboard or something like that. But you get the idea. But the whole point of this tutorial is to kind of not only are we creating the basics of a game, but what we're also demonstrating here is how you can kind of add all the hooks in that you need um, so you can then sort of handle those values um, outside of the actual custom widget itself. So let's um, let's go away. Let's engineer um, another prompt here to kind of add those hooks in to this particular game. OK, so back in ChatGPT, my prompt is I would like to add in a callback called on move to represent when each tile has been selected. On move should return back true if a mine is found otherwise returned false. Now that will allow us to kind of do some conditional logic outside of the custom widget with inside our Flutterflow UI, depending on the result of the user selecting the tile. So that is all I need to do. Let's just, as always, just paste in the latest code here. Let's let ChatGPT do its thing. Now what, is, what this will likely do is um, ChatGPT will generate some code for us. Now it won't quite be 100% right. At the top of the video, I said that and there is likely to be a slight change that we need to make to the code that's being generated just so that it works correctly with inside Flutterflow. But this is a very, very small thing and it's something very common and it's something just to get used to doing when you are generating code with inside a chat GPT. So let's leave that to do its thing and let's come back and then move the, the, main, uh, the main code back into uh, Flutterflow and then we'll just work on those little differences with inside the actual top of the widget itself. Okay, just copied the class there. Let's move back over here. Let's replace this as we are always doing. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, this class for sure. Let's just paste that in there like that. So that's all good. Let's have a quick look at, oh, wrong way. Let's have a quick look now and see what has been added here. So you can see here that we've now got this, this now required um, on move uh, sort of callback that we've got in here that we're gonna pass in. Um, and then here we have then got this piece of code here, which we're gonna need to make a slight little modification to. So um, let's uh, keep this really quite simple. Let's just copy uh, this particular class now because we know that code is always going to be the same. Let's just copy that and let's move back into Flutterflow. Let's go back up to the top here. Let's grab hold of this bit here. Let's just replace this top one just here. So we know that is going to be good. Now, if I hit save now, we're going to get a, a slight error now. So what we need to do is we need to make a slight change here. And this is the only thing that we need to do is we need to add in this as a future. And that's something that chat GPT doesn't put in for us. Now, now we've got that, we now need to add in the parameter. So just here, this is now going to be on move. 
Now the data type is now going to be action, which is just down here like that. I'm not going to be nullable, so it's always going to be required. Now with all of those in places, I'm kind of hoping I'll hit save now. We won't get any errors, or we are. So it's, it's still saying that the parameters do not match. So what is going wrong here? Okay, I just spotted it here. Now we need to obviously create our parameter, which is something that we haven't done. So I'm just going to say, is mine just here? Now we're inside the actual on move function itself. We need to add in this particular parameter. So we're going to say, is mine? And we're going to return back either a true or false here. So just choose the Boolean there. That's what we got. And of course, this isn't going to be nullable. We're always going to return it back here. And then that is the action parameter as we've got just here. So if I hit save, we should be good. There we go. We've got the little uh, uh, the little acceptance that we've got no dialogue that's appeared. That's a good start. Now we can just do the compile now. So we're just going to leave that to do its thing in compile. And then of course, we then need to then handle that with inside the Flutter Flow UI. And we'll go and configure that in just a moment. Okay, so that's all done. Let's move back over then to the widget tree and let's now kind of work on this that we've got here, this on move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a page state variable to track the number um, of moves that the user is making. So I'm just gonna select the home page there, just move and create a page state variable. And I'm just gonna call this moves like that. And I'm gonna set the type here to be an integer. It's not gonna be nullable, but it's gonna have a initial value of zero there. Just gonna enforce that, just hit confirm. So now that we've got that, if I now now move to the mind sweeper now a uh, sort of custom widget here we can now move to the action flow editor and I'm just going to open up the action flow editor and now we can now add this uh, this trigger called a callback so this callback is going to be invoked every time the user selects a particular tile that's of course hopefully if chat GPT had got its code right but we'll test that in just a moment so what we're going to do the first thing we do is going to add an action in here we're going to want to kind of increment that move number now that's really quite straightforward we can just go in here just type in state here go to page state choose add fields so we're going to set moves because that's the only one that we have and all i'm going to simply do here is increment that particular value by one so it's going to start at zero the first one that i do is going to set it as one that's all that we need to do so that is set so then next, how do we then handle that kind of that situation then if we are detecting that we've hit a particular mine? Well, we just need to add the uh, plus in here, add a conditional in. Now under the conditional, I can now look at this callback parameters that's now available to me. So kind of Flutterflow's kind of worked out that I am returning back this is mine kind of callback parameter. So just select that and you can see that it's here. So I'm just by simply selecting that, I'm saying um, is mine true? If it is, I'm gonna head in this particular direction. If not, I'm gonna head in this particular direction. So when I'm heading in this particular direction for a false, what am I going to, what am I going to actually do? So every time somebody clicks a, the tile, well, I'm going to want to track some kind of score or something like that. So let's now go back to the homepage itself. Let's create another page state variable to track the score. So let's type another one in here as well, just like that, to score. And again, that is going to be an integer. That's not going to be a nullable. And that's going to start as zero like that. Hit confirm. Now go back to my custom widget, move back down into the, uh, to the action flow editor. And of course, when I head in this particular direction, so if a, a mine is not found, then let's increment that score. So hit that, add action, just type in here state like that, update the page state, set the fields, go to score like that, and then let's go to the, uh, the actual increment and decrement. And I want to increment this by 10. So I'm gonna give kind of 10 points to every time that I dodge a particular mine. And that's all that I need to do here. So I just close that like that. So now I've kind of got this in place, I now need to represent that with inside the user interface. So let's now work on making some further customi uh, customization to the Flutterflow UI to include the score and the number of moves that we're making. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've created some widgets on the UI. Let me just show you what they are. I've just created a row here with inside the page container column here. I've got a column, I've got some text there to represent score, and I've got the score container, and all I've simply done is I've just put the text with inside the score container. And then all I've done is I've gone up here to then the text here, and I've kind of mapped this onto the actual page state variable there of score. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just displaying the value there. And I've done exactly the same thing on the moves. In fact, all I've done, I've literally just copied that and uh, 
So I copied the score and made the moves version of it as well and done exactly the same thing. Now, if we now have a look at this now with inside the simulator, you can now see I've got the score as zero and moves as zero as a default zero. And of course, as I now move through the game, you can now see that these values are now uh, kind of incrementing. But the one little problem that we've now got, of course, is when we hit the restart game, then our scores remain the same. We haven't got a hook um, inside our Flutterflow homepage to the restart the game. So what we now need to do is we now need to create another callback to say that when a user restarts the game, we're going to get this callback that's going to be executed that we can then kind of grab hold of with inside the homepage or application and we can reset those particular values. So let's um, let's go back now to uh, ChatGPT. Let's get it to add that in for us. And of course, we can then make those tweaks with inside the custom widget code. Okay, so here we are now back once more in ChatGPT. So please create an additional callback called on game reset, which is invoked when the user hits the reset game button. And I've pasted the latest code in the bottom there. Now, what I'm kind of hoping will happen is that ChatGPT will look at the kind of the way that I've kind of constructed this particular callback here and then produce a new callback, which hopefully will require me then to not make any sort of code changes in here itself. But let's see how clever it is. Let's hit the send here. It's now doing its thing. Let's just see if we get a glimpse of what it's doing on the on game reset. So let's see here. So we can see now that we've got the on game reset there. Uh, so it looks like it hasn't kind of done what I've wanted it to do here uh, in terms of the on game reset. Um, I must admit, I'm not particularly 100% sure whether uh, Flutterflow will actually pick this up there as a problem, but um, if not, then we'll just create it as a future. But um, let's uh, take this change. Um, we need to, it's going to have made some changes in this particular class as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy all of this like we normally are doing, and then we'll handle this in just a moment. OK, so I've pasted all of that in. Let's grab these other little bits that we need. So let's just copy this first, go the right way. There it is. Just hit enter there. Just paste that one in here. And of course, we now got this additional one that we need to take in as well. So let's just take that here. It's likely to cause us a problem. Let's go back in here. Let's move just down here. Let's just paste that down on this particular line like that. So of course, I need to now add that action in here as well. So let's just call this one uh, on game reset like that. Let's again uh, change the type here to then be an action like that. Uh, it is currently not nullable here. So we need to make sure that we handle that. Now, if I hit save, it's likely to probably throw up a bit of an error. Yes, it does. It doesn't it can't process that one here. So let's just change this then to a future like that. Let's just hit save. So again, just some little tweaks to be aware of that you just need to do just to make sure that things are all kind of lined up. But hopefully that is kind of all in place. So I'm going to leave that to kind of compile there. Um, and while that is doing that, let's move back over to the widget tree. Let's now handle this logic with inside the on game reset action flow editor. Let's add in this action. This is quite straightforward because all we're really doing is, is we're just resetting the page state. So set the fields. So first we're going to reset the moves. So just reset that back to its default value. We also can add in the other field here. Let's reset the score. Let's move that. Let's reset that as well. And that is all that we kind of need to do there. So we're just going to wait for that class to be compiled. It's uh, currently taking roughly about an, a minute and a half for me to kind of recompile all of these particular changes. That's what I'm kind of currently uh, looking at the clock and seeing. So uh, let's let that do its thing and let's move. Oh, in fact, we've got an error. Let's see what we've got going on. Let's have a look. Uh, the expression does not evaluate to a function, so it can't be invoked. OK, what code mistake have I made? Just looking here, I can see the code mistake that I've made. I need to say this is a function like that and then just hit the save and that should be all good. There we go. So a little bit of a mistake by me there. Um, you might have spotted that when I was doing it. So let's just compile that up. Let's hopefully that will do its thing. And uh, then we should be good to run, finally run this up and let's see what happens with our reset. OK, so here we are then. Let's just click around here. You can see the scores are now moving up, which is nice. Let's just move around here. We'll hit a mine very, very shortly. It's just going to be there. There it is. You can see here, score 70, moves 8. If I restart the game, then everything is set back to zero. So that is all working for us. ChatGPT has created all the necessary code for us. That 
is just what we're looking to achieve. Now, there's one little final thing that we need to do in this particular version of our game is, of course, is once the game has come to an end, we would like to kind of do something with inside the UI to kind of give the, the, the user a bit of a fanfare that they've actually completed this game. So we're going to kind of need to handle a, a another sort of callback here on when the actual game ends as well. So let's go back to ChatGPT and let's get it to engineer up for us another piece of logic change. Okay, here's my latest prompt. Then when the game ends, I would like another callback called on game end, which returns back a true to indicate if no mines were found, otherwise return back false when the game ends with a mine being discovered. So um, I pasted the code in again, the latest one, let's hit return there. Let's let that generate. Let's then move all of that back to the code editor and make any tweaks that is required at that stage. Okay, I've just replaced the my sweeper class just down here, but of course we've got some additions here. So we've got this now uh, required this on game end. So let's just move that across. Just move that in here. There it is. Just move back here and then let's have a look here. Now you can see here that some um, JetGPT has finally caught up with itself and it's actually creating the correct structure for the actual callback that's here. So we kind of got this function and um, we've got this thing called one. I, I think I might change that to is one here. So let's just uh, let's just get that in here first. So just paste that in here. I'm going to keep this uniform with the rest of my other ones is one like that. And now, of course, on the right hand side, I can now create that additional uh, action here on game. Uh, I called it game end here. Now it's going to be of uh, type action. Just move down here, select that. Now, of course, not going to be nullable. Um, we're going to pass in an action parameter here. Now, of course, that's just going to be is one like that type again is just going to be a boolean. There it is. Just select that. It's not going to be nullable. And that should be all that we need. If I hit save, that is good. No errors this time. So things are looking good. Once again, this now needs to compile as we've been doing right the way throughout this particular video. So I'm going to leave that to do that. But of course, we now need to move back to the Flutterflow UI and then let's just handle that uh, sort of situation. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm just going to call out to this particular custom action here called show confetti success. So let's move there now. Let's just do that. So uh, let's hook onto that down here on the game end, open up the action flow editor, add a conditional action right off the bat here. Now, the callback parameter here is this is this is one. That's good. So, of course, if it's true, we then need to invoke that custom action. Just hit the plus, go to add action. Now you've got this option here called custom actions. Just select that and we're going to say show confetti success like that. That's all that we need to do to handle that. So I'm just going to close that now. That should all be set up for us. Let's just head over to the custom code here. It's still compiling again, taking about a minute and a half at this moment in time. So once that's done, in fact, I'm telling you what I'm going to do to make this really easy for us to see the outcome of this. Um, let's just change the number of mines here to one. So grid size is six. Um, so case number one says so easy difficulty number of mines one. And then we can see hopefully that works. I'm just going to save that once more. Just leave that to recompile. I just need to select that there. It's going to do its thing. Just make sure that we are on that difficulty here. Just move down here, set the difficulty to one like that. Um, I'm just going to let that do all this thing, get it all compiled. And then let's head over to the simulator and let's uh, check to see what happens. OK, so here we are up and running. Let's give this a go. Then hopefully I can just simply select that. And there we go. The mine has uh, been avoided. I've got a success. I've got the confetti that's kind of loaded up, which is really good. So it looks like our game or certainly like the essentials of our game is running nice and correctly for us. So brilliant. Hopefully you enjoyed this little series here on creating this Minesweeper game. The challenge for you guys, of course, is, is how could you extend this further using the techniques that you've learned in this particular video? I'd love to learn more about your creations. And of course, if you would like the full version of this implementation of the game, then I've uh, included the link in the description for that. So feel free to take this and build on it further using the techniques. And um, I'd love to learn more about the creations that you come up with and how you can make this really something special. Um, but of course, if Minesweeper is not your thing, then of course you could use the same techniques to create other types of games like, you know, tic-tac-toe or something like that, even maybe a match three type of game. Um, so lots of opportunity for you within Flutterflow. You can technically use Flutterflow there as a your kind of your UI wrap and then with the custom 
widget itself that's kind of do is going to be kind of the brains of it it's going to kind of do all the intelligence so you can really sort of flesh that out using something like chat gpt so of course as always if you love this type of stuff then please do check out the digital pros no code academy the link is in the description i'd love to see you there um, and to be a member of the community lots of sort of sample applications a great community there as well of course that's where i spend a lot of my time as well kind of like helping everybody out and uh, and getting involved with inside the community itself but of course if you love this kind of content and you want to remain on youtube then please do subscribe to the youtube channel if you're not already a subscriber so there we go hopefully i'll see you then in the next video